Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mari Medic. I will do presentation on build strategy on new building projects. And we will shortly describe the evolution of build strategy in Drydox World Dubai on new building projects, how it was started on the beginning, and uh, what are the most recent achievements and improvements. New building projects overview. Uh, first, the new building project in Dubai Dry Dock started in uh, 1994, and it was a uh, floating dock, and it was floating dock for uh, Dubai Dry Docks itself. It was built in 1994. Since then, uh, Dubai Dry Docks has built more than 50 new building projects, and uh, there were all different type of the new building structures. So we have built floating docks, floating cranes, tugs, anchor handlers. A lot of barges and pontoons, aluminium pilot boats, mooring, mooring launches, bridge constructions, tankers, and recently seismic vessels. I will just pass you fast through the previous projects and current projects. Latest confirmed new building contract is MP72, and uh, after that we also got uh, four more barges, so we are on MP76 at the moment. So, you can see that there is a 14 years experience in new building. Okay, these are the floating docks. First one in 1994. This is our floating dock. Most of you have seen it, work on that. Then uh, NB16 floating dock in 2003 for Saudi Aramco. Then tugboats. We built total seven ships, same type, 50 ton bollard pool. Some of them you can see working in uh, Dubai dry docks moving the ships around, they are green color, and these are sample pictures for the vessels built for Dubai Port Authority. Then samples of MB-17, this is uh, two vessels, one was uh, anchor handler, and the other one was uh, diving support vessel, this is a mistake from my side, apologize for that. One completed in 2004, another one completed in 2005. Then uh, smaller, smaller objects, smaller ships. We have uh, mooring launches, pilot boats. We have uh, here mooring launches. Then uh, we have cruise ships, pilot boats. And then we have a skip boat for a big tuna fish vessel, which is approximately around 25 meters. I'll try to stand from this side, it will be much better. Okay, then uh, floating crane and portal crane. Both cranes you have seen working in Rydox World Dubai, the floating crane is 2,000 tons capaci capacity, built in 2005, also by New Building Division. And then we have a portal crane, 300 tons capacity, also built by ourselves in the New Building Division. Then uh, gravity-based structure, actually 10,000 tons of steel, plus equipment for Harima in Canada also one of the big projects. Then uh, after that, there was a series of four 6,200 deadweight bunker tankers for the local owner. This design was completely carried out within Dubai Dry Docks, from the basic development, conceptual design, up to the building of the ship. And then one of the latest projects, and I will say the crown, the semi-subversible hull for the Acker, two projects built, each of them 16,000 tons of steel, around 2,000 tons of now fitting, right? One delivered, delivered in uh, 2007, another one in 2008. Then uh, other structures, floating bridge. If you have passed over the floating bridge on Dubai Creek, the floating portion has been built in Dubai Dry Docks, and these are the pictures. And also lately, lately the Barges for the Turkish owner. And finally, the latest projects on which we are working at the moment, which you can see on the Grand Assembly and Panel Assembly area. Seismic ships for uh, different owners. Two are for Western Gico and uh, six projects for Polarcus. This is the state of the art on the market. Latest designs, they have uh, their clean ship, clean ship design. They can work in the Arctic areas, which is uh, which has a very stringent regulations and uh, demand for equipment is very high profile. 
I will say a few words about development of build strategy in Redux World Dubai in new building division. Okay. We can define our building strategy into three phases. Actually, we can say there was an early phase for the projects from NB1 to NB10. Then there was intermediate intermediate phase where uh, we have built projects from NB10 to NB41. And now the current phase where we built starting, I would say, from, from Akira. Early projects, we can see here the development. We can see that hull and structure has been built on one place in parts and pieces. And uh, characteristical for this phase that material was, all the material was coming on one place. It was assembled on that place. And only after assembly of the hull, then other activities have started. We can see that hull is in very advanced stage and now only piping is coming in. Supports are going to be fitted only after installation of the spool of the spools. Painting is not started. Painting will be started only on the later stage in dry dock. Advantages of these early projects. As at that time for the early projects, Dubai Dry Docks was just entering to the world of new building. And then there was some advantages of building ships in that way. First, it was easier work preparation. We didn't have to produce so much drawings. We mostly depend on the skilled people. Uh, drawings which were developed were only for the structure and for the cutting. And then piping supports and other things were more or less been built by the work preparation style on site. When pipes were routed, then supports have been fitted also on site. And then after that, we will start preparing the accesses and uh, walkways, ladders, and other outfitting. And only after completion of everything, we start thinking about painting, electrical cables, electrical cable trays, and uh, termination and connection of the equipment. Another advantage for that, limited design resources. Of course, if we are producing less documentation, we need a less powerful engineering department. And uh, at that time, engineering department was consisting of six to seven people only. Another advantage, uh, not, there was no requirement for 3D modeling of the, of the vessel itself. Uh, if you all know, the 3D modeling softwares are very expensive. We are talking a range of a uh, million dollars for, for the basic package of the softwares plus maintenance fee. And in case if you are this building only two, three ships in two years, then this investment cannot be justified. Then uh, another advantage, material delivery was to one position only. So almost all loose material cutting on the cutting machines has been delivered straight to the building place. Right? There was no requirement for heavy transporters, heavy cranes, or anything else. So whatever came there, it was up to limit of few tons. It could be lifted on position, installed, without also much investment. And then this is all what I mentioned, material delivery, no block movement and the minimum crane capacity required. Disadvantages, of course, was, first of all, permanent workforce. Due to the fact that uh, the detailed documentation was not available, people which started the project, they had to be there until the completion of the same project. Otherwise, the knowledge and uh, experience has been lost. Right? Uh, second disadvantage was only limited resources can be engaged. If we are building a ship on one place and then we are building frame by frame and then attaching the side shell on that and then maybe going for the next level, then only few groups of people can work on that location. Other people, due, due to the safety reasons and uh, inadequate access, cannot work on that, on that location. So, third thing required skilled personnel on site. Due to the limited documentation available, then uh, you need people with the skill to guide the workforce to get the quality product done. Right? You had to have engineers on site which were telling how to take the measurements, where to put the reference points, how to align the elements, how to align the shafts and other things, just in the building stage. How building has been developed to the later stage, you required more and more skilled people which were making decisions on site. Then, for disadvantage, there was the clashes between trades during the construction, of course, because if you are living on one place, 
we still didn't complete the hull and another trades are coming in, start building the pipes, start putting the supports, start putting the electrical cables. Hull structure has not been accepted and inspected. So once when you want to give it hull part for uh, inspection, surveyors or owners usually come there and said you are not finished with that part because there are still support, unwelded and other things which were actually not related to the inspection for which they were called. Then uh, loose material control. When we are building a ship on one location and we are cutting all the material and then sending it to the location for building, the control of that material is very loose. So most of the time we have a lot of lost material. Material was delivered to the wrong position and uh, all the time we had to go back and recut some of the elements which cause us a lot of a lot of manpower lost and uh, material. Then uh, another disadvantage, which I would say it's uh, one of the biggest one, limited opportunities for outsourcing. If we are all building a ship on one position only, we don't have a block division, block structure, then it's almost impossible to subcontract any part of work. Because if I'm building on the same place and I want to subcontract some other jobs on the same place, we are always having the clashes. Subcontractor is waiting of dry docks people to complete on other location, dry docks people are waiting subcontractors. So uh, resources to outsource any of the job were very, very, very limited. Then planning and follow up was inaccurate. Due to the very few documents available, the planning could not be break down in the, in the smaller units. So usually the follow ups has been done on the level of the vessel. If you are building a vessel of uh, five, six hundred tons at that time, it was very difficult to judge the progress. Right? We could say five, ten percent, three percent, but it was never accurate because weights are not available and only one weight was there and then it was depending on experience of the supervision which was there to judge the progress. Of course, inspections and clearance I already men mentioned and uh, another thing was there uh, this concept of building is applicable only for one project at a time. Right? If you need so much skilled, skilled people to do this work, if you require engineers on site which are going to guide workforce how to build the ship, if you cannot outsource the job, so you can concentrate only on one. Right? Now I will pass to the intermediate phase from NB10 to and be 41 to 44, we can call this phase intermediate. There were some investment at that time in engineering department. Engineering department has enlarged and uh, there was investment in 3D modeling software. And uh, this phase, characteristics of this phase was impl implementation of 3D modeling software. Hull block division were developed. Outfitting strategy was not defined. Painting stra strategy was predefined, but application application depended on application depended on circumstances. On the installation of hot towel fitting completes only after well advanced hull completion and painting. Coating of the hull starts only dock after completion of all other activities and big amount of expensive rework. I will show you some project. This is tankers which we have seen. There is a quite good uh, definition of blocks. Weights for each sub assembly and block is here. So planning was a little bit better. You can see 3D view, 3D view of the of the elements. You can see assembly sequence. Assembly sequence has been developed. What uh, we can see as a disadvantage, you cannot see there were permanent means of access in those tanks, which are not visible in 3D models. So this caused a lot of problems because they have to be installed after the closing of the of the blocks. These are some pictures from that phase, right? We can see. Uh, how blocks were going for the painting in different state of the completion. Here we can see that some pipes and supports are already there and we can see that block is completed quite good. This is the other block which is also going for painting and we can see that there is no consistency, there is no any piping there or any pipe supports. And another thing which we can see, elements of the ship structure are not completely closed. So. Even though these tanks are painted afterwards, we have to go in and do our job inside the double bottom, which caused a lot of rework and uh, a lot of problems later and the repainting of the complete tanks. We can see here the lifting of the lifting of the ground blocks. And you can see that ground blocks are not painted. 
uh, there is only very very limited amount of outfitting inside and uh, on next pictures we will see more advanced phase this is the same sample of one block this is the completed ship so we can see all the blocks have been joined but blocks were not painted outfitting equipment has not been installed there is no piping and no other things you can see also here improvements in this intermediate phase uh, 3d model of the vessel was available hull block division prepared weights and percentage for assemblies available so follow-up was easier and more accurate class checks were done in the modeling stage so there were not no clashes between the piping and outfitting and electrical cable trays up to a certain extent of course drawings are available for outfitting and pipe supports so this was another advantage planning and follow-up more accurate planning and follow-up drawbacks from that intermediate phase block division was not considering early space completion and testing on the block stage as we can see on the previous pictures we see the double bottoms are painted but there will still, on the next phase, we will still transfer some of the works, like tank testing, final inspection, and other things. So we cannot say, once when we exit the double bottom, the double bottom is complete. After that, the next stage, we have to go inside and spend almost the same amount of man hours just to carry out the final inspection. Of course, significant rework on painted areas and huge amount of staging due to... Now, current phase, characteristics for the current phase is maximum lower block size, Block division taking in consideration final acceptance of the unit, clearly defined outfitting strategy, painting strategy predefined, minimal rework after final block correction, outside hull completion completely painted before the launching of the vessel. So once when we are going to the dock, there is no more painting work. We can just do touch up and cosmetics. And dry dock minimized or completely abolished. Then in the current phase, when we are defining a build strategy and block division limitations, what we are taking in consideration is general arrangement and general arrangement and equipment layout, crane capacity, which in our case is 300 tons for lifting and 150 for turning, transport capacity, which is 400 tons for the blocks in Dubai dry docks, equipment delivery schedule depends when each equipment is going to be delivered and how much we can close. If, for example, main engines are coming very late, then we have to consider the accesses and the method how they are going to be installed. Then, load out capacity. At the moment, new building division has a capacity of 8,200 tons for the load out. Then, ground bearing pressure of the building area, so we cannot build more than ground bearing is allowing. Safina dock gate. We have limitation in the dog gate up to 65 meters, so whatever is wider than 65 meters cannot be built in the, our new building facility. Hydrolift maximum allowable draft. Maximum allowable draft in our hydrolift in Safina area is 4.1 meters. Actually, height is 5, but kill block supports are 900, so maximum what we can get is 4.1 meters. Then another thing is panel line dimensions, which is limited to 16 by 16 meters and then available plate and profile size of the market, and of course safety requirements. This is one example of the block division for the Acker. Now more detailed one, each block is divided into four sub-blocks. We will see later pictures of this block in different stages of completion. And then each of these sub-blocks has been divided in detail assembly procedure. Right From the smallest part, which have their name, to assemblies, and then to sub -block. So all the material can be traced to the smallest part. You can see some pictures. This is the deck block completed. You can see it's completely painting. This is tank block, so there is only limited outfitting. This is middle block, bottom block in the outfitting stage. So steel is completely fitted. Uh, turned over to the class and client. Now outfitting is going on. You can see a lot of piping, a lot of supports, which will be inspected before the painting. And after that, block will go for the paint. You can see similar. Then this is one of the sample of the lifting of the blocks. With the proper build strategy, we can, on this case, we have joined two side blocks. So this is a length of approximately 30 meters. And weight of the block is 300 tons, just on the edge of the crane. We use a special device to turn it, right? You can see one side block, and also at the same time here is the deck block, more than 30 meters. All blocks have been painted, anodes have been installed, inside outfitting, so you can see uh, progress. Also one of the samples from current stage, this is the deck block. You can see a lot of piping installed, ladders, cable trays, 
here same thing, one column block, outside staircase is fitted on the painting, and this is one sub block completed. You can see that inside electrical fittings are fitted. This is original fittings which are going to be used on the vessel and they are powered. So there are no requirements for additional lighting or something like that. Right? Everything is painted, there is no station here, walkway is there, electrical cables are here, pipes are there, lights, everything is working. As you can see, there is a light going through the manhole, so these sides are still not installed. Now outfitting, just to say a few words about outfitting strategy. For the Acker project we develop stages of outfitting and then I will just concentrate on a few of them. They are coming from S0 to S9 and then for us important phases are S3, S4, S5 and S6. This means that whatever is marked with this S number has to be installed before painting. For example, this support it's SU201 and then in the list of material you can see that SU201 belongs to phase S4 so it has to be installed on the panel stage, right? With all this information available it's uh, very easy to subcontract the work. For example, this is one of the spools which has to be installed on earlier phase. So with availability of such a list it's very easy for the production department to judge which of the spools are required on earlier phase or supports and then subcontract them completely out because drawings for each drawings for each support or spool are available can be given outside subcontractor can fabricate and deliver to the yard painted and blasted which is only installed on the critical required time this is one of the modules so all the outfitting supports piping and motors are installed before, outside in the workshop, and then full modules installed board. This is one of the samples from the latest barges. You can see this is panel stage, outfitting, hull outfitting is already there. This is the, these are the draft marks, and these are the fenders. And over here we can see manholes are installed on the panel stage. We can see the vent pipes. This is one block division for the seismic ships, which you have seen previously. Blocks are adjusted to to the size of our cranes and our transporters. This is for the next vessel, S6133, preliminary one. And this is for the latest one, S6134. These are one of the samples of the current project. So we have blocks completely finished, painted with a lot of outfitting already in position. So after launching, there will be no more painting. Everything will be completed. We can see new techniques in the fit up which are reducing the man, man hours used and allowing a faster building of the vessel. Some more pictures we see before the painting of the block itself, all the pipe penetration and supports are installed and welded. Same thing is here, we can see now two, one, two, three blocks joined together. All outfitting, everything is painted and now this erection joint is going on. And the same thing from the other side. Improvements. In the current phase, we have detail assembly procedure, which was visible, detail fabrication drawings with the measures for the hull, naming convention for the hull parts, predefined work stages, outfitting work preparers for work packages, spool and support trackers for piping. All jobs are easily identified and quantified, so it's very easy to create a follow-up and have a good cost control. Disadvantages. Large engineering work preparation department is required because we are generating for one block, for example, on the Acker, we are talking about 3,000 drawings. So it's a significant, significant amount of paperwork, of drafting work. Expensive 3D modeling software, in-house development of the tracking software, because when you have like uh, five, six, seven thousand spools on the project, you need a really good system to track all these spools and to know the status. Extensive paperwork and document control is required and for moving of the blocks, heavy transport equipment, which is also very costly and very easy. Advantages, what we said, it's easy planning for all production activities, traceability on all stages. For Raquel project, we had 100% traceability for all the welds, so this was also done. Final inspection of structural items in early stages, so on the panel, on the block level and not later when we have closed spaces and when we require staging and difficult access. 
plastic and painting activities without rework. Significant review staging requirement, as you can see, if we are lifting one big block of 300 tons of 30 meters, then we don't require so much staging as if we are building plate by plate. Production man hour reduction, outsourcing of the job, what is very important. Production department can take, for example, one full block support drawings and give to subcontractors and please fabricate these supports for me and deliver on that at that time. Same is what was not available before. Then we have, because of that, we have a multi-project option. We can build blocks outside of the yard as we did for Akev. Some of the blocks have been built by one of our subcontractors in Hamria, delivered to the yard and installed without any problem. So this is giving you, giving us wider possibility and we can take more projects. That's why at the moment we have 10, 10 projects running without any problem. Conclusions. Build strategy is an evolving process. It's coming from experience of 14 years in Dubai dry docks, right? It didn't come over the night and uh, we develop it with each new project because each project have more stringent and stringent requirements. Crucial for project success because before build strategy, we were struggling a lot to complete the vessel. Vessel can be built, but completion was always questionable. We always have problems with the final inspections, with the commissioning and other things. And then adequate design build strategy will upgrade quality of the final product. What we see in there, we can see the tunnel completely finished. Minimize rework and definitely improve the safety standards. Any questions? Thank you very much.